All right, so we arrived to the trailhead. The question that was asked was, where am I from originally? And um, all right, happy November, guys. It's November 11th at the time I'm filming this. Um, woke up eager to go to the gym. Uh, been pretty tired lately, though. So once I get to the gym, it's packed. It was supposed to be a heavy leg day today and all the squat racks were full. So I kind of waited a bit to see, you know, oh, hopefully one frees up soon. And no, it was just jam packed. So I decided to, you know what, I'm going to leave and I'm gonna try again tomorrow on Sunday when it's less busy in the gym. And I'm probably just gonna go home and take Maya on a walk. So uh, we are gonna go on a hike. Where is she at? Don't mind my messy kitchen here. Maya. <laughs> So she's kind of anxious right now. She always gets super anxious and ignores me. Maya, hey. She ignores me when I put on her harness because she hates car rides and she knows when her harness goes on that she's most likely gonna go on the car. So I'm trying to decide what hike to go on today. There's a lot of options to choose here in Vegas. Um, it's 40, 48 degrees and I'm wearing a tank top. So hopefully um, it warms up a bit or hopefully I walk fast enough to get my heart rate in increased enough where I'm keeping myself warm. But yeah, I thought I would take you guys on the adventure um, with me. So yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get this little hike started. Maybe I'll uh, show you some of the scenery and I'm not sure if I'll turn this into a Q and A or not, we'll see. I'm kind of new to this whole vlogging thing. All right, just uh, parked here in the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. <laughs> Maya and I decided that we were hungry, so we are getting some Chick-fil-A breakfast and Maya is freaking out because she's so excited to have some Chick-fil-A. Of course, I'm gonna share a little bit of chicken with her. So I was looking on the All Trails app and that's usually what I use when searching for hikes. And one pulled up um, that I thought would be just right for this morning. It's not too long, it's just under three miles. Uh, it's rated as moderate. So we'll see. Uh, the only issue that I have is that it it says that it's kind of hard to locate the start, the starting point of the trail, and that there are other trails that kind of break off, and there's no signs that mark, that mark, the trail path. So hopefully we don't get lost. What I might end up doing is downloading the All Trails app, so I can just download the trail tracker, so I can continue to or just check to make sure we're not deviating from the path. Uh, so yeah, wish us luck. Right, my goal for the next, like I guess as we go into the new year, as you finish off this year and go into the new year is that I just want to try not to be as regimented and strict to a schedule. I want to kind of enjoy life. You know, I, I've been super kind of military with my scheduling and like, okay, this is when I'm going to go to the gym. This is when I'm going to work. This is when I'm going to, you know, these are my meals that I'm going to eat today. And I want to just be a little bit more free spirited when it comes to, um, just living life and enjoying the moment. Cause I feel like a lot of times we work, super hard to you know we're work hard now so we can rest and play later what you gotta just try to enjoy each day and not be so strict with yourself and that's how i've been i've been like you know what i'll work 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 hard make a lot of money now save 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 so when i'm 65 and retired i can go and travel and enjoy life but i mean like by the time i'm 65 i'm gonna be old and achy and cranky and i'm probably not gonna enjoy traveling or the finer things in life when I'm in my 60s as opposed to now when I'm in my 30s. So I'm just going to try to you know, travel more and it's okay to, to splurge from time to time as long as you're being responsible about it. Anywho, uh, this video is gonna be a lot of just random rant and my thoughts. And this is quite good. I gave my, some of my chicken sandwich. Gosh, I love Chick-fil-A so much. I know there's a lot of controversy with Chick-fil-A and their strong opposition towards the LGBT community, you know, but I I enjoy their food, I enjoy their product, and you know, I, I, I support the food that they make, for sure. Um, I'm at a stoplight right now, so I'm probably gonna to stop filming since I'm technically driving and this is not safe. But, I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts in regards to Chick-fil-A? Um, if you are, you know, gay, do you still go to Chick-fil-A? 
Um, my thought process is like, you know, I don't want to fight fire with fire. I think like if I show my support to them and just be a kind person, eventually they'll come on out. So, all right. So we arrived to the trailhead. Um, I think <laughs> there's no markings whatsoever. So this is what I'll be hiking this way. And I don't know, there's no markings that say Sunrise Mountain Trail A. So Maya and I are just, we might just start walking on some random trails and see. Um, I'll do my best to use the All Trails app to stay on track, but this is where we are guys. If you can see, there's a uh, Las Vegas behind me. It's a little bit of a smoggy day here. I'm not sure how much you can see. I'll try to incorporate maybe some close-up B-roll footage so you guys can see the nice view. It's really cool to see Vegas from this perspective on from the east side looking westward because I live on the west side and I always look eastward. So uh, you can see the stratosphere, the wind, uh, you can see the MSG sphere, the Mandalay Bay, Bellagio, everything is in eyesight. The airport, you can see where I live clear over yonder. <laughs> Maya's just here chilling. But anyways, so uh, let's get this hike started. This way, I think. It might be hard to, hard to record because I'm recording on my phone. So, and I have to keep my all trails app open to make sure I stay on track. So it might be kind of hard to film this video here. Um, but we'll see. <music> east side of Las Vegas near Sunrise Mountain. Maya's leading the way. I need to actually watch my feet because I'm gonna I've already tripped a couple times. Haven't fallen down but stumbled a bit. Yeah it's a it's a beautiful day. November 11th guys in a tank top outside. <laughs> this is why I love being in Las Vegas. It's this time of year, you know, fall, winter, I'm still able to come out, wear a tank top and shorts. Uh, summers here are dreadful though. Got up to like 116 this summer. I'm just inside my air conditioned home the whole time. Uh, ideally it would be nice to be in Vegas during the fall and summer. No, excuse me, during the fall and winter months. And maybe somewhere up north, maybe. I don't know, maybe Minnesota. Maybe in the northeast. Denver, Colorado maybe would be nice in the summers. I definitely would want to probably be somewhere where I can still enjoy some outdoor activity. But also have the luxury of being near a, like a bigger city. All right, I don't want to stray too far off the trail here. But we get a view of the mountains behind me. There we go. Give you a little 360 view here. There's Las Vegas behind me, the city. Yeah, I'm hearing like gunshots over that way though. So I'm kind of like nervous. I think there's like a shooting range nearby or something. Uh, don't want to be walking in that area. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, I definitely want to make it a goal to come and be outdoors more, to explore the city of Las Vegas more. I mean, I'm not, as you guys know, who have been following me for quite some time, I'm not into nightlife or like bars or that type of scene, just isn't necessarily fun for me. So 
coming out for me is like coming outdoors um, just activities that don't involve like staying out late at night and getting hammered uh definitely want to do some more traveling um but there's a lot to see within vegas within this this little valley here you know there's so much going on it's crazy to see i'm looking out there's nearly three million people just i can see all at once <laughs> It's kind of crazy. Puts into perspective how small we are. Maya's leading the way. Oh, shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. hit the midpoint of the hike. You can see the strip behind me, but I don't think you guys can, unless I zoom in, but it looks a lot better in person for sure. Um, anyways, let's see. I thought I would uh, maybe answer another question from my last Q and A video. I didn't have time to answer all the questions. So question that was asked was, where am I from originally? And, um, yeah, I'm from Nevada, guys. Uh, Elko, Nevada. So it's a small town in northeastern Nevada. Uh, it's a mining town. So a lot of the families that move there work for the gold mines. Um, Nevada is actually one of the top producers of gold in the world. I have to look up the statistic about that. But um, but yeah, Nevada produces a lot of, a lot of gold. Uh, it's not like you find chunks or bars of gold in the ground. What they do is they extract huge amounts of earth from the ground and through chemical processes they are able to like take out like separate the gold from the earth um uh, it's, it's, it's really cool i got to tour um a few mine sites being well, growing up in school we had like a a week during the year called mining week where we just talked about mining and all the careers in mining and the importance of gold and how it's used and all sorts of things like microchips and just things that you wouldn't think that gold would be used for other than just like flashy bling you know um but yeah elko grew up born and raised um went to high school there uh super active in uh sports as a kid i played soccer i loved soccer i swam for my local swim team um was uh favorite strokes for the 100 meter freestyle the 100 meter uh, butterfly those are my two top swims um, i also love doing distance swims <laughs> i love swimming the mile and the 800 so um, i'm a pretty good swimmer uh, i've since uh stopped swimming since i got into bodybuilding and weightlifting but you know maybe, I, maybe i'll pick it back up again who knows i feel like now that i've added so much muscle i'll i'll sink like a rock I to, yeah i loved swimming i used to as a kid um keep all the programs from the swim meets and i would always highlight my time and then i'd like look at my competitors and be like okay like my next swim meet i want to i want to instead of getting like 28 seconds for the 50 meter free i want to go for 26 seconds i want to beat this person or that person like I'd, I'd highlight my rivals and my competition from other uh, other cities and yeah it was, that was the competitive side of me so swimming was probably my favorite sport growing up as a kid um i wasn't the best at soccer i played it but I wasn't, <laughs> I definitely wasn't the best <laughs> at it. Uh, what else? So high school, um, I did cross country. I loved running. Um, I did track and field. Uh, what else? I did wrestling as well. I wrestled in high school from sophomore year to junior. Yeah, sophomore, no, sophomore, sophomore, junior, and senior year for three years. And I originally signed up for weights because I wanted, excuse me, I, I originally signed up for wrestling because I wanted an excuse to be in a weights class because I, I, they gave priority to students who did wrestling. 
in particular because the coaches wanted us to you know be in weights class to build muscle to build strength because it was uh very important in wrestling that you have strength to defeat your opponent and weights class helped you achieve that so i i, I didn't per se want to do i didn't want to do wrestling because like i thought it was a cool sport i did it as an excuse to be in weights class because i always wanted to build muscle and be a bodybuilder and be big like arnold schwarzenegger and all the and sylvester stallone and all the guys in those movies so um i honestly wanted to quit after my junior year because it was pretty brutal wrestling honestly like the practices were hard you know i dreaded to go into practice after school i just wanted to go home and relax after a long day when seventh period hit i remember being like oh god i have to go to wrestling and it's like two hour long practice and we have to do all these intense drills and waterfall takedowns and it's like oh but I stuck through it. I I, I didn't want to quit because I didn't, I was in this. I was from a small school, so I didn't want to be known as the quitter. So I just kind of sort of came to that peer pressure of not wanting to be known as oh yeah, like Mateo is a quitter. Like he's a little uh, sissy boy. Didn't want to, couldn't take wrestling, couldn't handle it. But that's the wrong reasons to stay in the sport. But I'm glad I did it because it definitely built character in it after doing something so difficult like wrestling and what made it hard was obviously practices are brutal matches are brutal right you're literally like there's so much body contact in wrestling and it it, it hurts to be thrown down on the mat or like put into like a or pinned down on the mat being like manhandled essentially you know or you know and it takes a lot to be on the uh, like the um the offender side as well um anywho so i'm like my brain's exhausted from a lack of oxygen from all the, from this hiking. But yeah, so anyways, wrestling was great. Um, it, oh yeah, the other hard part about wrestling was having to make weight, you know? When you're, your body's still developing as like a 15, 16 year old, and when you're having to like go through extremes to kind of like cut weight to, because <laughs> your body's still growing, but your coaches are like, okay, you need to, you're wrestling this weight class, so you have to make sure that you're, not eating junk food or not eating a lot because then it's going to put you in the weight class higher which is going to be harder for you because then you're wrestling bigger stronger guys so you you know i remember like nights before i'd be putting on like extra shirts and sweatshirts and jump roping in my garage to try to like lose all that water weight so i'd make weigh-ins the next day so that was uh, very taxing on the body and i couldn't enjoy some of my mom's cooking and whatnot because i, I was afraid that it was going to put me over the weight limit for my weight class and that's i mean i feel like as a high schooler like a 15 16 year old you shouldn't have it to worry about restricting calories you know so it kind of created this bad relationship with me and food um so that's that's another reason why wrestling wasn't what what one of the downsides of wrestling that i didn't like uh so yeah so that was my kind of adolescence. Yeah, soccer as a kid, swimming. I swam through high school too during the off season between like between wrestling and cross country and track. I would still hit the pool and still swim for my local swim team. Uh, our high school didn't have a swim team. So I did swim for um, the city of Elko. Um, good old Elko, Nevada. Uh, what else? So yeah, um, in high school, I was super involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. So my mom was a high school teacher. Um, and she was the advisor for FBLA. So I, of course, wanted to be an FBLA too because I used to see my mom go on trips for like state competitions and conferences to cool big cities like Denver, Orlando, um, Chicago. You know, being from a small town, I was like, well, you're like traveling the country. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to join was to uh, take part in these fun travels and conferences and competitions so for those of you who don't know fbla is future business leaders of america so it's a very um you'll find this club in a lot of high schools it's basically um for those who are aspiring to go into business um it's a good club to be a part of um you can compete against other high school students in events such as like marketing advertising uh, accounting you know business strategy um, as a high school kid so we're learning all this like finance um, back when I was in high school, like there were events like keyboarding and word processing and desktop publishing, web development. But I'm sure now like things have, as we advance the technology, I'm sure there's other events that have been added, probably like social media, like marketing and stuff, which is really cool. So I learned a lot of great skills in that club and went on to study business in college. So uh, let's see. So FBLA, I was involved in DECA too. DECA uh, stands for Distributive. Um, 
what is it? Distributive Education Clubs of America, I think, but it's basically marketing. It's a marketing association. So those who are interested in marketing, um, I was in that club. I was in Key Club, which was a service club. I was in Coraliers, which is uh, like the elite choir of our high school. So I auditioned as an eighth grader going into high school and I made it. So, and it was actually pretty difficult for, not to like brag, but um, to make it into this elite high school choral group as a freshman. And I auditioned as a middle schooler and I made it as a freshman. So I was a four year um, choralier members. And that was my favorite class probably because I uh, love to love to sing in the choirs. I'm definitely not a soloist, but I, I can match the person next to me and I have a good ear as well. So, uh, so yeah, choir. I love choir. I, I love to sing. I was in choir all in, um, oh, Maya, your leg is tingled here. She's like sniffing around. I was in choir seventh and eighth grade and then also the choir from ninth to 12th grade. So loved, loved to sing. Typical, typical gay kid, I guess, being in choir. Ooh, <laughs> just kidding. What else did I do in high school? So yeah, that was it. I was involved. I was like, I mean, when you're from a small town, I mean, there isn't much to do. So I just got really involved in high school and activities and clubs and extracurricular activities and sports and i was never good at like the mainstream sports that involved like throwing and catching like basketball football like, i always did sports that were more individual like it was all on me i i couldn't blame a teammate because like obviously when i'm wrestling when you're a wrestler you can't blame anyone but yourself it's just you and your opponent so you're making the decision it's all you uh, same with track same with cross country same with swimming you know you're in your own lane and your pro purpose is to just outperform the other swimmers next to you. You know, so it's not much of a team sport in the sense that I have to like, that I could blame someone for not like catching the pass that I threw to them or whatever. Okay, so after high school, I uh, applied to Brigham Young University. It, that was like my dream school ever since seventh grade. Uh, my mom went there and I grew up Mormon and it was like the elite Mormon school. It was actually pretty competitive to get into. So I knew, from like ninth grade that I had to get good grades. And my goal was to get, you know, all A's, achieve that 4.0 so that I could at least have a fighting chance to get into that school, um, as well as being involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, Cause I know that was important for colleges as well. So that was another reason why I was super involved in like everything, <laughs> like that kid that needed to be in like every yearbook picture, like every club. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I went to BYU. I got accepted. That was actually probably one of the most happiest moments of my life, to be honest. I remember um, opening my acceptance letter, um, like the first half of my senior year in 2007. And I just remember the first words um, were like, oh, we're delighted to inform you that you've been admitted to Brigham Young University. And I was just like, my mom was right next to me. And I was just like this big gasp of relief. And it was just honestly... To this day, probably one of the best feelings ever because it was something that I've been working for for such a long time. Um, and I feel like the fruits of my labor paid off by getting accepted. And I moved to uh, Provo, Utah, fall of 2008 to start my freshman year. And uh, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to study, but I was taking all like the business classes, of course, because I was like big into business in high school. You know, I took accounting, finance, like marketing, like like business administration, you know, the typical business classes that my little high school had to offer. Um, I ended up, you know, I was at BYU for like a good six years working on a four year degree uh, just because it took me a while. I had to repeat some classes because I, some, I, you know, I was a lot better high school student than a college student. High school, I was like gun ho, but by, by, by my college years, I, I would like skip class to go to the gym and work out. And I'm like, oh, I'd rather just go to the gym or I'm, I don't feel like it. So then I, ended up not getting as good of grades and then college is a lot harder than high school because in high school I could get by kind of like you know kind of half studying half listening whereas college was a whole other level so I it took me a bit to realize that so I did have to repeat some of my classes let's turn this views a little bit better here uh let's see ramble 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 if you're watching this video and if you haven't clicked away you're awesome <laughs> go ahead and uh, like this video subscribe um I'll post a lot of just random raw footage like this, unedited. So you just get to know who I am. Um, the real, the real Mateo, I guess. That answers that question though. If you have any more, feel free to ask in the comments and maybe I'll continue to do follow-up answers to your questions and uh, yeah. I don't have much else to talk about guys. Um, if you have any, 
any topics or videos you want me to make in the future, um, let me know and I'll make a list and uh, hopefully I can make it happen for y'all. So um, we're gonna finish this hike now. I'm gonna put my phone away and just and sh make sure I don't trip on the way down because going down is always hard for me. I'm, I'm notorious for sliding and falling on my back. So I gotta be extra careful. All right, guys, um, have a good day and I'll catch you on my next vlog.